Hi guys, Nada here from Tech Testers and here in front of me I have a brand new laptop from Asus. So this is the ZenBook Pro Duo, which means it comes with two screens. So it has a main screen that is a uh, 15 inch 4K OLED screen, but it also has a 14 inch screen in the base of the laptop. So it's actually very interesting and something that's becoming a trend nowadays. We got to uh, play with it at Computex a bit, but we never actually got it uh, here. So this is the first time I'm actually going to open it and uh, yeah, check it out. I'm actually quite excited. So what I thought to do today is a little uh, first impression slash uh, testing with you guys video. And then we're going to uh, draw some conclusions based on those test results. This particular one uh, comes with an i7. It has 16 gigabytes of um, RAM. It has a 512 gigabyte SSD and an RTX 2060. So you can actually do some gaming on it as well. So let's uh, open it up see how it looks, how it feels, how it performs, and see if it's worth the $2,500 it costs in the US or 3,000 euros it costs here in the Netherlands. So let's go. All right, so everybody knows that first impressions are everything and I really think that Asus is nailing that. Coming out of the box, the ZenBook Pro Duo actually does impress with its build quality and brushed aluminum finish. But it also includes some nice accessories like the Samsung pen as well as the wrist rest. Now the laptop itself uh, should weigh around two and a half kilos so it definitely has some weight to it. It is not super light ultrabook but it's still portable enough. On the side it has two USB type A ports and type C port with Thunderbolt support. The laptop also has a full size HDMI but unfortunately I don't see a card reader, which I somehow think could have fit here somewhere. Now, if you open it, the display hinge pushes the laptop up a bit, allowing for more ventilation and raising the screen a bit. There is basically no flex in the screen, nor in the base of the laptop, so it really feels great and sturdy. Now, obviously the OLED and the second screen are the main eye catchers here, and to make that possible, they put the keyboard a bit to the front. Now that's something that takes a bit of getting used to while on the go, but on a desk, it actually feels nice to be slightly further away from the screen. Now the keyboard itself uh, feels very good actually as well. It has no flex and I really do think I won't have any issues typing on this a lot, especially if I use the wrist rest. So the touchpad is on the right side of the laptop. It also doubles as a numpad. Considering the fact that I still have some accidental wrist touches on my own laptop, not having a touchpad in front of the keyboard might actually turn out really nice. Now, most importantly, this is supposed to be a precision touchpad and it seems to work really well. Turning the solid screen on for the first time, it really does make an amazing impression. It feels super bright, super contrasty, and the colors really pop way more than on the typical LED screen. Now you can instantly see it is very glossy and reflective, so that is definitely something to consider for outside work and in a very light environment. Since this is meant to be a content creation machine, Let's do some tests and see the first results. Oddly enough, I expected peak brightness to be really high as the screen subjectively looks really bright, but the actual result isn't that crazy actually. So basically it's just the contrast that really makes all the bright elements really pop. The color accuracy in sRGB mode isn't perfect. The colors are pretty oversaturated in every direction, so it's clear that Asus calibrated these screens to make that wow impression and not for anyone doing color accurate work. Now, if you do care about that, keep in mind that you can calibrate the screen manually as it does have a full DCI-E P3 gamut. Actually running verification against DCI-E P3, we see it is more accurate there. Okay, so one of the big questions, I guess, is what would you use the second screen for? Now, I can imagine looking some things up in a browser while gaming or putting a YouTube video there while working. And we all know that if you're serious about productivity, one screen is just never enough. Now, I will have to play with it a bit more to find my own use cases for it. But at first glance, it is a decent screen. Touch sensitivity is great and Asus really did put some effort into the supporting app, so you can actually run several applications side by side. 
Now, since this laptop has an RTX 2060, a proper one, not the Max-Q one, Asus clearly expects people to actually game on it as well. And I'll admit, all the gaming is actually really, really cool. The contrast just gives a whole new level of depth for some games. Now, keep in mind, this is only a 60 Hz display, so it's not meant for competitive stuff. But if you just care about image quality, this kind of feels like turning on another layer of RTX, one that actually works for every game. Judging from the first couple of games, it looks like the RTX 2060 isn't being held back here either, so AAA gaming is definitely possible, and games actually sound pretty good as well, because the speakers on this laptop are actually not that bad. Now, what's really noticeable is that the laptop fans don't really get loud either, even under heavy load. The GPU temperatures stay at comfortable 75 degrees, CPU was running in low 90s as expected. Now, it does exhaust hot air on the side, so for example, my mouse hand got pretty warm pretty quickly. So you should consider that if you are prone to sweaty hands. Me, on the other hand, my hands are actually always cold, so I did welcome a bit of heat. So before we round up this uh, laptop, let's check the CPU benchmark as well. And it looks like the cooling solution works really well. You should have no problems rendering videos at a decent speed. So I'm gonna leave it at that for today. I have to say that the first impression of this laptop is actually quite excellent. I absolutely love the fact that it has two screens because that is so useful and such a viable option and not just a gimmick that people probably think it is like some marketing trick. It's not, it's actually something that you can use every single day. Some of the things that take a bit more time to test, like battery life, for example, is something I cannot do in one day, but I don't expect this laptop to uh, last a whole day on one battery charge, being that it has such a powerful hardware and it has two 4K screens. So if that turns to be true, don't be disappointed. It's just something to yeah, expect from this laptop. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please uh, leave them in the comments down below and I'm going to do my best to answer them because I am going to get to play with this laptop for a few more weeks. Yay! And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!